how's it going? How are you doing? Thanks for hanging out. This is really fun. Do you ever get that rush where you... It's like when you walk into a candy store and you're super excited. This is how excited I am right now. My name is Jason. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks for joining me on today's show. Um, this is the Outstanding Life Show, where we talk about everything related to mental health. We talk about recovery. We talk about mindfulness. We talk about addiction. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. This is the first time you're here. Thanks for hanging out and, and, and enjoying the show. Thanks for stopping by. I am new to this. I say new to this, but I'm I'm running the video and I'm running the audio subsequently at the same time. And I'm trying something new. It's a different workflow and I'm not really sure how it's going to pan out. But it's going to be trial and error. It's going to be an adventure. I pride myself on trying something new and pushing my comfort zone. And this is that. That's, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm getting outside of my comfort zone. I just finished working a 10 and a half hour long shift. I'm a little bit tired, but I'm, I'm committed to having my, my community, my friends, my family to, to catch up on what's going on. It's been a while. It's been a hot minute as the kids would say from the last update. I have been keeping myself busy. I have been, I wanted to go over a couple of things. Let's, let's start off with some structure. An update as to what I've been working on, what I'm doing. An update on what I want to see this develop into. And ultimately where this is leading to. Now these are all good things. These are all, these are all positive updates I want to go and say. So it's, it's exciting that I'm trying out something new. And that's kind of a spoiler at the end about this podcast, this video. I'm streaming this live to Facebook and I'm recording the audio, but I'm recording the audio separately and it's a little bit different. I'm using a different program called Ferrite. It's a new to me program, but it's definitely not a new program. And I'm really interested in seeing how it works out and how it, how I can kind of keep up with it. Normally what I've been doing is just scraping my audio from my videos. Like I would have a, uh, I would do these live shows like I would do on Facebook as one would do. And I would go and take that video and then import that into an audio, into Ferrite and then have it scrape the audio from there, clean it up and that, that would be it. That would, that would be the extent of my podcast. I would just, it would just be the scraping of the audio piped directly into Ferrite. And, oh, sorry. No, I would use the video piped into Ferrite. And then from Ferrite, I would then upload that to the podcast, the podcast. And I'm, I've, I've kind of been happy with it. As a newbie, as someone that's just kind of starting out in this adventure of trying out these new things, but it's never been something I've been completely satisfied with. So one thing I'm working on is how would I take this to the next level if I were to do that? How would I develop this into something more, not just an afterthought, not just something where I'll do that checkbox and then forget about it until next week. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta go do that thing again. It never felt rewarding. I never felt like I was being just and true um, to my community because I know, you know, this is crazy. This next part, like I would look at, what was it? Was it last year? I think it was, I did. Last year, I looked at the numbers for the engagement and I noticed that when it comes to videos, the short form videos perform the best on Facebook, but the long form videos perform better on YouTube. They're all the same content, like a, like a 10 minute video chopped down to one minute. The one minutes did better on 
Facebook, but the 10 minute videos do better on YouTube. But then when it comes to the audio, even with what I've been working on, the audio, the number one thing was the, uh, the, the uh, smart assistant, Alexa, was the most, like, it, more than, like, the, 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 oh, no, my Alexa just turned on. My Alexa, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh my, my friends, this is hilarious. Okay, technical thing is out of the way. We got that sorted out. No more Alexa's gonna be jumping in. But the, the Alexa smart assistant was one of the one of the highest in engagement or not engagement sorry podcast downloads and i had never thought of that i was like this is huge okay maybe there's a way i can focus on that maybe i can find a way to kind of kind of excuse me how do i how do i leverage that in a way that that can match match the tone of what i'm speaking of where the show is and what we chat about. I'm running this stream a little bit later than I'm used to. I'm not, I, I, I wasn't sure how to start. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start. I'm just going to hit the button, go live. I'm going to hit the record button. I'm going to go into Ferret. I'm going to send this out there. It's going to be an adventure. My friend. It's going to be fun. But this is just the beginning. This is just where we're starting at. And it's at the, it's at that low part. It's at that spot where there's no other place to go but up. And so I'm having fun with this. Where I'm heading with this is when it comes to the video, I've got that sorted out. The video part is kind of an, I don't want to say it's an easy thing for me to do, but it's not as challenging as I had made it out to be. And when I focused on that, um, on this audio side of things, you know, recording the audio, in hopes of capturing that into a podcast. Right now, it's a separate audio capture, but I want to be able to integrate that in the future. And I'm hoping Ferrite, this program I'm using, can help solve that. But that is that is what I'm aiming for when it comes to this, because I don't want to have just the same audio for both. I want to be able to have curated content separately. I can share more through the podcast that I may not be able to communicate effectively through the video. The video is great, but I don't want to have everything always be video, if you know what I mean. Although video is fun. Don't get me wrong, I love video. But there are certain things that there's there's other podcasts that I enjoy listening to where there's more nuances I can pick up on. And some other content creators that I enjoy the most, while they might have videos, they also have audio. And I think that that might be something interesting to go and look into. And this is the beginning steps of that. And this is where this journey is just starting right now. I have focused a lot on video and I think the next stage that I'm working on is more of the backhand stuff. And part of the backhand stuff is the audio. And I don't want to leave the audio in the corner to figure it out for itself. I want to find a way to make it work. I want to find a way to leverage that. So that's where we are that's where we're going but for for enough about the back end stuff enough about what's happened so far i mentioned earlier about some of the content that i've been consuming and that's i've spent a lot of time these past few months where things have been crazy things have been all over the world all over the place. I was going to say, about to say all over the wall, but things have been up and down, left and right. So as for an update on me and what I'm working on or how I'm doing, how is my mental health holding up? Because there's, there's, there's been times where it's been challenging. There's times where I reached out for help. I've communicated to my family and my friends to let them know, hey, you know what? I want to chat. I need to, I need to I have a sounding board. I want to be able to go and bounce ideas off of this. And if all I'm doing is, if all I'm doing is this being, it's like if 
here's an example where if all I ever do is think about one thing, that's all I'm going to be focused on. I don't know if you can relate to this, where if all I'm ever doing is just listening to the echoes of my own voice bouncing back, and it's like an echo chamber where the only thing you keep hearing is the same thing over and over again. It can't be. There's no good that can come from that. And hearing only me doesn't make doesn't make for a happy me. And I needed to find a way to reach out, to engage more, to stay connected. And I would find these ways through staying in contact with my friends, doing thermostat checks. And one of the things I started to do is I don't know if you've, you've received one of these or if you haven't or if I haven't got to you yet, don't worry. I've started going and what is it? These, these, I got that earlier. We just saw when I said Alexa and the thing, it was, it was one of those portals. Have you ever seen those Facebook portals, like the commercials or whatever? I grabbed one of them and it lets you send it's, it's almost like I'm just trying to describe it now, like a Facebook portal. Think of it like a, I almost want to say it's like a high end webcam. It's got, it's got, I think it's like a 14 megapixel like webcam on it. And it's got a really nice speaker and it's got a big screen and that it's, it's, but then the, the quality that comes out of it from a streaming perspective, me as the video nerd, it only outputs not 1080p signal, even though it can capture it, and it doesn't output 720p. It sends out 360p. Now, 360p, if you don't know, it's like, in, in a rudimentary term, you could take 1080p, and cut that into a smaller size, and then take a smaller size of that smaller size. So we're thinking of like a quarter of a quarter. That's 360p. 360p is not that jazzy of a of a if you were to if you were to turn on the stream right now and you're watching a, a YouTube video and it pops up in 360p, you're turning that off in like 2.2 seconds because you'd notice it's a 360 low resolution. And by low resolution it means it's not that high quality and as fun as it is these the facebook portal is not a good streaming device and by streaming i mean it's not good for long form content but and here's where here's where the here's where the fun part comes in it's good for short form content and for short form i mean i would take out my phone hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna pretend grabbing a remote in my hand I'm like just pretend that this is my phone and it lets me record what is it? I think it's like 30 second video it's nothing that long and, and it sends it through messenger so it sends a message and in that 30 seconds it forces you if you only could communicate in 30 seconds it's almost like Twitter where if you could only communicate in so many characters it's really really hard to focus your message into short form and this Facebook portal forces me to carve my message into 30 second bytes. And in that 30 seconds, I'll... Some of the people that stay engaged to my content are often regulars, I would call them. You know, they would leave the hearts, the stars, the comments. Uh, they'll send me messages or they'll reach out. And so I'll reply to them using this portal. And I'm able to go and take this. And in that 30 seconds, I can say things like, hello, Susan. And I, I would have already done research and I would see what Susan's just posted on Facebook. And I would say like, oh, she just painted a fence. Because I don't know. I just see that she's painting and she's got like a brush in her hand and it's painting red. So I might send a message to Susan like, hey, Susan, how's it going? I noticed you were out painting your fence. It's a beautiful sunny day. I hope you're doing well. I'm just reaching out, doing a thermostat check. I hope this message finds you healthy, happy spirits. I wanted to reach out to you, let you know how I'm doing. I'm holding up okay. I wanted to send you this message, let you know I'm thinking about you. Let me know what's going on. You take care, Susan. Have fun. And I hope to hear from you soon. 
something simple, quick, and easy, like nothing long. And this Facebook portal has let me, I don't want to say send these messages out in droves, but it's allowed me to, it, it, it's boxed me in to the point where it's kind of like, I'm giving another example where like, imagine you could only open an orange, but not with two hands, but instead with one hand, how would you do it? At first you're thinking about it you're like oh i could do that sure i could it, would, it might take you longer but you can do it but what if you had to do it in the same amount of time but you'd get more proficient at opening that orange like opening up a ketchup bottle or something i don't know so this facebook portal is, is good practice and it's boxed me into the point where i can start communicating in short form content i don't get to send long messages because it's a hard cutoff in 30 seconds I don't know what kind of a ship Facebook is running, but 30 seconds is not that much time. But I'm able to send these messages out. And it's there's there's often some messages that are well received. Like there'll be the person that sends the message back right away. Like they'll get that message and they're like, holy crap, this is amazing. Thanks. Thanks for thinking of me, Jason. That's amazing. Like there's there's like a a heartfelt, immediate knee-jerk response and that i think is really cool and then there's another group of people who get that same message and you know maybe i'm not sending it to susan but maybe i'm sending it to bill i don't know i'm making it up so maybe i send to susan bill and a third person but the second person they get that message and instead they they see it they watch it it's 30 seconds I'm assuming they watched it, but then they don't do anything. Like they see it, they absorb it, and they just move on. And that's okay too. That's cool. I have nothing against that. I'm totally open. If you have their, if they ever did want to chat and catch up and let me know what's going on, that's cool. But if not, I trust in good faith that they are doing well. Then there's a third type of person. Now this third type of person I found the most interesting. The third type of person is I'll send that message out and then I'll make it up again. I'm sending it to uh, Brenda. I don't know. So I'm sending it to Brenda, but Brenda's the third person. and Brenda gets the message. And then she doesn't do it. Anymore. And a day goes by and then the second day goes by and then maybe even a week. And then on that week later, I'll get a message from Brenda. And it's like a wall of text where it's, it's a huge data dump of an update. And it's, here's what I'm working, here's what I'm doing. Here's what's going on in my life. I wanted to let you know, thanks for thinking of me. I really appreciate that. And it's a really heartfelt, like this person has burned way fuel into the night coming up with this message. And it really connected. It was 30 seconds out of my day. And it meant enough to this person where they now turn around and write, they took days to reply and it starts this conversation and it keeps me in contact and it refuels and recharges that sense of community, that sense of connection. And for me in my, in my, in my recovery in, you know, if, if you're new here, that's totally cool. Uh, but if you're not, you've heard me talk about it before where there's the hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. And one of those is the lonely part where you, you don't make decisions in that lonely state. You don't make decisions in your hungry state either. Like if you're feeling hungry, you're going to be hangry. Same thing if you're lonely. If you're feeling lonely and you're making purchase decisions on Amazon, you're probably not going to be buying the healthiest food. So then there's tired. There's angry, there's, and so, so when I stay connected to my friends, when I stay connected to my family, these small 30 second increments don't take a lot because what is 30 seconds? 30 seconds isn't that much, but when it starts a conversation and when it makes a, a heartfelt connection and if it, if it means something to the other person. 
you know, there's there's some messages that I've gotten back from from my friends and my family where uh, one 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 person I reached out to and I was like, hey, you know what? I was thinking about you. I hope you're doing good. Let me know what's going on. I know things are kind of a bananas out there, but I hope you're, you know, hope hope you're not bananas. By the way, I saw that you painted your truck. I don't know. I would come up with something that was relevant to what they were, what they had done or what they were spending their time on. And one person let me know that in the, since the, everything started, since it all got crazy, you know, in the past six months, nobody's checked up on them. Nobody's reached out to them to ask them how they're doing. Nobody's circled back or stopped or sent a message or sent the postcard or, or none of these things. And it meant a lot to that person that they stay in contact, but they had felt bummed out that nobody was doing it. And then my 30 second message popped up and in that 30 seconds turned into a much longer conversation, and recharged their batteries. And when, when there's tough times for me, when there's challenging moments, when I'm having a hard day, when things are, are difficult for me, I go back and I read these messages and it recharges my batteries. It, it refills me. And I'm like, you know, 30 seconds, Jason, wasn't too bad four days ago when I sent that message. And, you know, there's enough of these random heartfelt messages that come in consistently they trickle in because remember i'm pumping these out i might send about three to five of these facebook messages a day you know i start out with the birthday you know whose ever birthday it is send those out and then i get into a roll and then i throw in a couple more and i'll look at you know the people that are most engaging with what i'm doing and we send in those messages out hey how's it going how you doing and then that opens up a can of worms in a good way and that for me has been rejuvenating that for me has helped me stay connected in a time where it's difficult to stay connected to people i'm, I'm used to having everybody's had to make adjustments over these past six months seven months now and there's different ways we've been able to manage to cope and it's it's not it hasn't been easy there's been times where it's been very challenging and I, I didn't I didn't know how you know when when you doubt or when you when you have that hesitation when you have that white knuckle experience where you're holding on to the, the steering wheel and you're trying to get through the next 36 hours you're trying to get through to the next four days or something like the white knuckle experience I can relate to in early stages of recovery. When I was so new to this and I was so doubtful. One one update I'm happy to share is I, I hit my eight years of sobriety just last week. And I remember, I remember eight days of sobriety. I remember being being, I almost want to say so blue or like you're so green you're so wet behind the ears that you don't really have any sense of a solid foundation. You don't have that sense of community. You don't have the sense of, I don't want to say certainty, but you don't have that sense of that there's support out there and that there is an amazing wealth of resources when it comes to mindfulness and recovery. There doesn't have to be just one solution and there's more options out there than just doing the same thing every day. So when I look back now, when I look at where we are and some of the things that have happened, when the hesitation kicks in and when the when the fearful pheromones jump in and start running through my veins, I begin to wonder, how am I gonna get through this? What am I gonna do? I focus back and I remember, hey, you know what? It wasn't as hard as it if, if I can get through some of those hard moments in early recovery, I'm I'm pretty I'm I've I've been in challenging situations before like that, and that reminds me of situations we're in right now. Some of these challenges we face today are not the same as the ones back then, but the same method of resilience, the same method of having that sense of reaching out for help when I need it 
having that knowing that there is a supportive community, having that those good habits where I've been able to focus on eating healthy, getting exercise. Maybe I don't get as much exercise as I should, but you know what I mean? There's, there's certain things I can do in the meantime that allow me to, I don't want to say distract myself because that's what I used to do, distracting my own. If, if I don't think about something, I can, if I don't think about something, I can just pretend it doesn't happen. If I don't think about something, I can avoid dealing with it. And using distractions in the past was a, was a coping mechanism. One thing I've learned through through experience is distraction is not a way of life. Distraction doesn't solve any long-term problems. By avoiding something, it's just delaying the inevitable. It's, it's putting it into a position where in in, re in recovery, we would call it the dark, the, the shadows, where in the heat of my addiction, I could, if you imagine me shining a light, and if I shine the light and it's over in one area, I'm really, if you take a look at that one area, it's an amazing area. Everything's clean over there. But then if you look at the shadows, the shadows, however, are not that clean at all. And in fact, if you inspect it, you notice there's some pretty gross, grueling, like it's never a happy situation looking at that shadow area. So one of the things in recovery we talk about a lot is, I don't want to say it's being brave enough to go into the shadows, but what's another way to say it? Um, not being afraid, not being scared. It's like that. I give a lot of analogies where Imagine you've got like a pile of laundry in the corner and after a while, that pile of laundry gets bigger and bigger to the point where it's almost overbearing. And then you look at it like, ah, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to spend my Sunday going through that. And this is where it comes in. Like, do you, do you really want to go and avoid? Do you really, do you, Jason, do you really want to, do, do you want to go and spend money? Do you want to do laundry? Is that something you want to do right now? Or do you want to not do laundry and then just sit on the couch? Well, eventually you're going to have to go and deal with it eventually. Like at some point, you need clean clothes for, for next week or something. But when it comes to addiction, when it comes to being afraid of going into the dark area, being, a, being, I want to call it risk averse, where you're just not going to go into that shadow area and do the work that's needed, dust off the, the, the cobwebs or brush away the, the skeletons. If you don't go into those areas, areas will keep growing like the laundry pile it's going to keep getting out of control nobody wants that i don't want that and so the skills and habits i've learned along the way in recovery and addiction is not dealing with things doesn't solve anything not approaching it from a solution solution based objectives or, or if all i ever do is look at life as a series of problems that's all i'm ever going to see there's more to life out there than just anxiety, frustration, resentment, negativity. And if we dig into that to other topics, and I think that's something we might dig into in future chats, but I wanted to put this out there, let you guys know I'm thinking about you, give you a quick update on how I'm doing. I've been holding up pretty good. I've been focusing on mental health lately. I've been enrolled in some of these courses that are out there. The Coursera courses, the Mental Health Commission of Canada, they've got courses too. Um, I've in I've taken the time to focus on me, to put myself in a position where I'm able to then help others. And I can do that through things like these Facebook chats or by sending these quick hello messages. And maybe they're maybe they mean a lot to one third of the people. Maybe they don't mean a lot to anybody. But when times are tough and things are challenging, you certainly know what to do. All right, my friends, you take care. Thanks for hanging out. You have fun and I'll see you again soon, probably tomorrow. Bye.